Good morning, everyone. So we're going to continue taking a look at our investments and uh, compounding interest and so forth. What we're going to look at today is this idea of continuously compounding interest. Now, this is kind of interesting because really you don't see this anywhere in terms of um, you know investments with banks or stocks or anything like that. But it's kind of a neat concept and it helps to kind of be able to wrap your brain around the idea of compounding interest and how we go about calculating it and sort of the power of compounding interest. So that's why we're talking about it. Okay. Um, so the idea is that, you know, now that we understand compounding interest, we've looked at both quarterly and monthly, uh, actually annually, quarterly and monthly compounding interest. What we can do is we can now sort of come up with this overall formula, right? This overall formula that we can look at here, okay, um, this whole piece right here, right? When A is the maturity value or what the investment is going to be worth at the end of our investment, right? We can figure that out by using this formula. So P is our initial principal investment, right? In other words, how much did we actually put in, right? So we're going to multiply that by 1 plus R over N. Now, R is our interest rate, and when we say decimalized here, it just means that we're changing it from a percent to a decimal. So, for example, if our rate is 5%, we'd actually use 0 0.05 as our decimal. If our rate is 10%, we'd use 0.1 as our decimal, that kind of thing. Now, the kind of fun part here is N. The idea with this N right here is that's the number of times it's compounded per year. So we can put any number we want in there, to figure this stuff out. Usually it's going to be either once a year because it's yearly, in which case we really don't even worry about it here because R stays the same, T stays the same, doesn't matter. Or it's going to be quarterly, so we'd put a four here because it's going to be uh, you know, four times a year. Or we might do monthly, in which case it would be a 12. But if we really wanted to, we could do weekly compounding interest, in which case we'd, N would be 52 for the 52 weeks in a year. Or we could even do daily, in which case it would be um, 365, right? Because it's 365 days a year. And we plug that into both these places. And then obviously T is the number of years or the time of the investment, the loan, whatever this is, right? So um, this general formula allows us to work with whatever compounding time frame we want. Where it gets really interesting is if we kind of take it and say, okay, yeah, let's do weekly. Let's do daily compounding. Well, let's go even further than that. Let's go to minutely, every minute, every second, something like that. So the idea is this idea of co continuous compounding interest, right? Compounding it more frequently than every second. That's getting pretty crazy. But it gets into some really neat stuff here, right? Okay, so if we... Um, get to a point where we're saying, okay, we're going to have it compounding continuously, then that essentially gives us the best bang for our buck and we would re receive the most interest we possibly could on our investment, right? So the formula ends up being this right here. And this is kind of interesting. A equals P times E to the RT power, okay? Now, what's this E all about? Let's talk about this for a minute, okay? Let's talk about what's in here. A, again, is our maturity value. What's it worth at the end of our investment? P, same as before, our principal amount, our initial investment. R and T haven't changed either. R is our annual interest rate in decimal form. T is the number of years. E is kind of interesting. So E is the number 2.7183. Now that seems kind of random. So there's this nice little explanation right here about what it's all about. I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. But the basic idea here is that E is this cool number kind of like pi right? It doesn't change, okay? No matter what we put in the formula for R, no matter what we put in there, the E stays the same. It's always 2.17, uh, excuse me, 2.71828, okay? And like pi, it's this sort of random non-repeating digit, but we always get the same thing when we plug it into this formula, okay? So, we end up rounding it off typically to like 2.7183 or something around there. But it's really kind of neat. So let's take a look at how this actually works, right? This is our formula. 
So, an example. If we take and put $2,340, deposit it in a bank that's paying an annual interest rate of 3.1%, compounded continuously, we leave it in there for three years, what's our ending balance going to be? Well, if we use our formula here, P equal, uh, PE raised to the RT power, we're going to do $2,340 times that E, which is 2.7183, raised to the RT power. So the RT power means we're going to do 0, uh, 0.031, the decimal equivalent of our rate, times 3, the number of years. So when we do that math out, we get approximately $2,568.06 as our end value after the three years. Let's take a minute and do a couple down here. We've got five problems on here. I'm going to do the first two with you. You can try the other three on your own and then jump over and work on the worksheet that's in Google Classroom. Okay, so let's look at this first one. So the first one here, uh, let me put my font in red so it's a little easier to see. First one here, an amount of $1,240 is deposited in a bank paying an annual interest rate of 2.85% compounded continuously. Find the balance after two and a half years. Okay, so we know A is going to be equal to equal to PE raised to the RT power, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and just do, 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 take a minute and go format, text, superscript, so that, that fits in right there. Okay, so now we're going to say A is going to be equal to P, which is in this case uh, 1,240. Right, uh, get rid of that seven. Typing is a little off right now. There we go. So it's going to be 1,240 times E, which is 2.7183. Now, this is where it gets a little interesting because now we're going to have to raise this to the power of RT. So, what's R in this case? R is 2.85% or 0 0.0285. T is two and a half years, so we're going to do 2.5, right? So we're going to, again, just go ahead and play with our formatting for just a minute and do superscript. There we go. So it's going to be. Uh, exponent there. So we're going to now break our calculator out and give this a try here. Okay. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is with my calculator, I'm going to do uh, 0.0285 times 2.5. Okay. And when I do that, I'm going to take this. Now, when I do that, I get, I know this is really hard to see because it's really small here, but hopefully you can be following along as I go through it. So now when I do the 0 0.0285 times the 2.5, we get 0 0.07. 1, 2, 5. So that becomes our exponent. So now I'm going to take my calculator and I'm going to do 2.7183 raised to the 0 0.07125 power. And that's going to give me. answer of 1.07 let's go 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up with, when I plug this in here, it's going to now be 12, 1,240 times 1.0738, let's say. So when I do that out, I end up getting an answer of 1,331.57 dollars. So my investment in two and a half years went from 1,240 to $1,331.57 approximately. Okay, let's take a look at number two here. Okay. An amount of $2,000 is deposited in a bank paying an annual interest rate of 3.75% compounded continuously. Find the balance after three years. So we're going to do the same basic thing. We're going to plug everything in here. So A is going to be equal to 2000 because that's my initial investment, times 2.7183 raised to the, now let's pay attention here, 3.75% so it's going to be 0 0.0375 times in my years here it's going to be after three years so i'm going to do times three okay so again plug this in here that right there using my calculator i'm going to do 0.0375 times 3 is 0.1125. So I'm raising this to the 0.1125 power. Okay. When I do that, I get 2.0. 178. Okay, let's see here. Go back to my calculator. And on my calculator, I'm going to do 2.178 raised to the 0.1125 power is going to give me 1.1195. One, we're going to say if we round that off a little bit. So that means that my investment is going to be, oh, I need to change these again to 2000 to accurately reflect our problem here. So I'm going to do 2000 times 1.1191. And when I do that, I get a, an end value after three years of $2,238.14. Okay. So that's an example of how we can do continuously compounding interest. And again, you probably won't ever see continuously compounding interest in any sort of a bank or anything, but it's worth sort of understanding how our compounding interest works at various time rates, time frames, okay? So use what we just went over here to help you do some comparisons of investments on the practice sheet um, right here, number 206, okay? So if you have questions as you're working on it, uh, use Gmail or Google Chat to check in with me. Um, I will also try to have a video link open in classrooms so that you can chime in through a video link if you want to talk in person. All right, give it a try, see how it goes, and we'll take a look at it a little bit later. Thank you.